welcome back to Art with Mrs. Lips. This week is clay week and I'm really excited to show you two different clays that you can make at your house. Today we're going to be getting started with our three deep breaths. I was able to get a breathing ball, so we're going to be using a breathing ball just like we did in art. We're going to take three deep breaths together. Here we go. Very good. Taking three deep breaths helps me feel a lot better and more calm when lots of things are different. I'm used to going to school a lot more and so that's a different thing in my schedule. Taking deep breaths can help me feel really good and calm. I wanted to let you know that every week on Wednesdays at 2.30, I'm gonna be hosting a live event for you to join me in Google Meets. Find that link in the choice board for art. We are going to be reading stories, sharing our art, and just checking in with each other every week on Wednesdays. This week for clay week, the first clay I'm gonna show you is called soda and starch clay. To make this, all you need is baking soda and cornstarch. The second clay we're gonna be making is called salt dough. For that, you only need flour and salt. Let's get started. We are going to be making the soda and starch clay right now. What you need is baking soda and cornstarch. We are going to be putting a half a cup of baking soda in. I'm going to use a fourth of a cup measuring cup. Uh, I'm going to do two scoops. Florence, will you please help mommy? Then we need one fourth of a cup of cornstarch. We're going to add just a little bit more than a fourth of a cup of water. So I'm going to fill it up and then just have a little bit dribble over and add it into the pot. Now we're just going to cook it on medium heat until the clay forms. You really want to try to stir it constantly so that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan and burn. Our clay is starting to come together. Florence and I finished making the clay. It's cooling right here in this bowl. I just put a damp towel uh, over the top so it doesn't dry out. It's still a little bit warm to the touch, so we're just gonna let that cool. Once it is totally room temperature, then we can get it out and start making things with clay. All right, now the clay is room temperature. That means it's not warm when you touch it. So we are going to be taking it out of the bowl. It's a little crusty. Florence, can you take it out of there? And what we want to do is knead it. That means kind of push it around on the table so that, oh, get all the little chunks, so that it doesn't really have a crust on it anymore. I was kneading it and now it's nice and smooth. It doesn't have the dry cracked outside anymore. Florence wants to make a, an egg, a bird, and a nest. So we're gonna work on making that. All right, so here we have a little bird that we made. Then we also made two little eggs in our nest. And then here's a little nest. We're gonna leave these all out so that they can dry. And then when they're all dry, we can paint them. If you want more clay, you can always just double the recipe. Hi, everyone. It has been 24 hours since we made our bird out of the soda and starch clay and as you can see it's dry. It did crack quite a lot but it held its shape and now it's ready to paint. And the eggs cracked as well but we were thinking that that was actually perfect for our eggs, right? Our eggs are cracking. Yeah! yeah. So it looks like our eggs are about to hatch. We're going to start painting them now. We are using the little acrylic paint that I got from Blick. So we just put it on a plate and we're gonna be mixing it. Now this paint is permanent, so we have something to protect our clothes. We are gonna start painting our soda and starch dough. We had lots of fun painting on our soda and starch clay. This paint worked really well, but any paint you have, tempera or watercolor paint, I think would soak in nicely. Just make sure you let it dry. 
Do you like how the nest and the bird turned out? Yeah. I like it. All right. Well, we will show you an up-close look once the paint is all dry. Goodbye. Now we're going to be making something called salt dough. For this, I'm going to use a quarter cup of salt, two quarter cups, so one half of a cup of flour, and a quarter cup of water. If you want to make a bigger batch, you can just double those measurements and make more. For this, all we're going to do is put one scoop, which is one fourth of a cup of salt, into a bowl, then two scoops of the same amount, so I'm going to do one fourth of a cup of flour, and another one fourth of a cup, so one fourth plus one fourth of a cup is a half of a cup, very good. I'm gonna mix those together so that the salt and the flour are combined. Then I want to slowly add water to it. This is going to be making something called salt dough, which is really similar to Play-Doh, but if you bake it on a cookie sheet in the oven, it becomes hardened like clay. Now that my salt and flour are combined, I'm gonna start slowly stirring in a quarter cup of water. So I'm just gonna take a quarter cup of water, put a little bit in, stir that. Once that's all combined, then I am going to add a little bit more water. The recipe recommends doing a couple tablespoons at a time. So I'm just putting a little bit of water in, stirring it up, and then adding more. Once you add all of the water, keep stirring until the dough forms together. Then you are going to pour it out onto the table and knead it for 10 minutes, which is a really long time. So once your dough kind of looks like this and it's crumbly and starting to come together, dump it out onto the table and knead it for 10 minutes. I'll see you guys in 10 minutes after I'm done kneading. After you've been kneading your dough for 10 minutes, it'll become nice and smooth and ready to work with. Before we start making our sculpture though, we do need to let it rest. So I'm gonna be taking my mixing bowl, putting my dough in the bottom, and letting it rest for 20 minutes. I don't want it to dry out, so I'm gonna be putting a damp dish cloth over the top. All right, now we've been letting it sit for 20 minutes and our dough is ready to sculpt into a sculpture. For this, I think I'm going to be trying to sculpt a duck with some eggs. So I'm just gonna separate it and start making my shapes. To make a ball or an egg shape, I just like to roll the clay between my two hands, or you can roll it just like that on the table. It will become a ball shape that then you can sculpt from. Now that I've sculpted my duck and two eggs, I'm gonna be placing them on a cookie sheet so that I can dry them in the oven. It became a little misshapen when I moved it to the cookie sheet, so I just had to make sure it was the shape that I wanted. Now I'm gonna go put it in the oven. I have my oven set to 250 degrees. Then I'm just gonna be putting them right in the middle shelf and letting them bake. I let the salt dough bake for about two hours at 250 degrees. It actually puffed up a lot more than I was expecting, um, so it became a little bit more round. Um, but now it's really hard and ready to paint. Um, here's a close-up of the texture of the salt dough. Became a little light brown on the bottom. The eggs turned out really nice and smooth. I'm excited to paint those. The bottoms also got a little bit light brown. I'm going to work on painting these with my small acrylics from Blick that I unboxed in one of my first videos. Now it's time to paint. I've painted all of the base color and now it's time just to add a couple details. Here's my little mallard duck. 
I looked at a picture to see what the feathers looked like so I could paint the same colors. Now it's time to paint the eggs. Duck eggs are light green, so I'm just gonna mix up a light green and then paint that color all over. Now I have my finished mallard duck. And my two speckled duck eggs. Now that I have made my sculptures out of the soda and starch clay and out of the salt dough, it's time to compare which clay I think is best. Now, starting with the soda and starch clay, you can see that this clay, when I made my bird, it held its shape really well. When I made this tiny little beak, it stayed just where I wanted it. The nest also held its shape really well. I just had to air dry it for 24 hours, which was also a really great thing is I just had to let it sit out and it dried without putting it in the oven. Now, one thing that happened with this is that it did crack. You can see the texture or the surface is very cracked. That happened when it was air drying. When I left it to dry, it became even more cracked and that's just how it stayed. The paint worked really well with this surface. Um, you can see the nest also had a pretty big crack in it. So maybe if I let it dry out slowly underneath a damp towel or underneath a wet napkin, it wouldn't have cracked so much. Another thing about this clay is that you do need to heat it up on the stove in a pan. So if you're going to be making the soda and starch clay, you are gonna need an adult to help you use the stove and a pan to make it. Another positive about the soda and starch clay is that it's very durable. Florence has been playing with these toys now for almost a week and they have held their shape, they haven't broken at all, so they're very, very durable. Moving on to the salt dough. Now, one thing that I really liked about the salt dough is that you didn't need any heat to make it. I just stirred together the ingredients kneaded it for 10 minutes and then let it rest and then it was ready to sculpt. Now I did need to put this in the oven for it to dry. I put it in the oven for two hours at 250 degrees and it dried it out very well. I think just like Play-Doh, if I were to let this air dry or like the soda and starch clay, if I left it out long enough, this would dry just through air drying it. So that's something you can try if you don't want to use the oven. Another great thing about this is that it had such a smooth surface. It was very smooth to paint on. Now it did burst by the bottom, but overall the rest of the surface was very smooth. So that was really great for painting. One negative about the salt dough is that it didn't really hold its shape. So when I created my duck, I kind of wanted the tail to be shaped upwards, but when it was in the oven, it kind of slumped down. So it didn't hold its shape very well. It puffed up a little bit. Um, overall, it definitely still worked to create a duck, but it didn't hold its shape as well as the soda and starch clay. The eggs also turned out very smooth on the top, but then they cracked and burst along the bottom too. I think this works pretty well for eggs because it just kind of looks like it's hatching, but it did burst a little bit. Overall, they both have really great things about them and it was a lot of fun to make both of the different types of clay. Overall, I do think the salt dough was a little bit easier to make because I just needed to mix together the ingredients and I didn't need to use heat to make it. The soda and starch clay had a really great texture when I made it, so that was a lot of fun too. It was a little bit smoother when I made the clay. Both of them are a really great option. If you have adult supervision, go ahead and try both of them. If you don't have an adult that can help you, I would recommend just making the salt dough and then leaving it to air dry so that you don't need to use any appliances in the kitchen. I hope you have a lot of fun making your clay sculptures. I'm excited to see them. Please email me pictures. My email is on the bottom of the choice board that you guys are looking at or at 2.30 on Wednesdays when we all get together on a Google Meet to meet up with a story time or to share our artwork. I hope you have lots of fun this week for Clay Week. I miss you all and remember, be safe and be kind. Bye. Do you think all YouTubers sound this crazy? It's gonna crack. <laughs> Can you get mommy ketchup? <laughs>